Everyone who's an NBA fan has idolized certain players growing up, whether it's because they create the most buzz, maybe they're the best player from your local team, or perhaps they're even the best player in the entire league. Whatever that reason is, we all have one player who has inspired us to love the NBA, and these players have the responsibility of being a good role model. However, some of these athletes play as the greatest villain instead. In this series, we will take a look at some of the NBA's most despised players, whether it's because they didn't get along with teammates and coaches, or concerning off-the-court issues that caused fans to turn on them. I will review why this player is hated, share stories from other players and coaches about them, and determine whether the criticism is fair or not. But real quick, if you guys like this series and want to see more of it, drop a like so I know and I'll make more videos like this in the future. And if you're new, please hit that subscribe button with post notifications turned on. It is completely free and it literally just takes one second, so you guys can be up to date on all my new videos. But without further ado, let's discuss today's player. Karl Malone as a basketball player was one of the greatest power forwards of all time. His combination of strength and quickness generated a ton of easy buckets as he scored the third most points in NBA history. Part of that is because of how durable Malone was, as up until his last season when he was 40 years old, Malone had only missed 10 games in his first 18 seasons. And from 1987 all the way to 2002, he averaged 26 points a game on over 52% shooting. The mailman makes a great case as the best player to never win a ring, as he was a 14-time All-Star, 14-time All-NBA member, 4-time All-Defense selection, and 2-time League MVP. He may not have won any scoring titles, but if Michael Jordan didn't exist, Malone would have had 5 scoring titles, and the only other players that would have had more than that would have been Wilt Chamberlain and, well, Michael Jordan. Point is, Karl Malone was a nightmare to deal with on the court, and in that department, I can't praise him enough. But of course, that's not what this series is about. You guys want to know why he's hated, so let's just go ahead and delve into some of these reasons. Number 1. Karl Malone vs Isaiah Thomas Malone wasn't the most well-liked on the court, as just like Bill Lambeer, Carl also had the tendency to randomly elbow people in the face. There are a couple instances I could talk about, but the most notable one actually happened to Bill Lambeer's teammate, Isaiah Thomas. Back in a regular season game from 1991, the 6-1 guard was driving inside for a layup when Malone suddenly launched his entire body right into Thomas's, leading with his elbow, which left Isaiah bleeding on the floor for several minutes, and he would eventually need to get 40 stitches. As punishment, Malone was ejected from the game, fined $10,000, and suspended for another game. Decades after the incident, Isaiah Thomas still calls this the dirtiest play he had ever experienced. And he's not really wrong, because at 6'9", 260, Malone was a massive man, so for him to be jumping into Thomas' body mid-air, he could have really hurt Isaiah had he fallen the wrong way. So I would agree with the punishment Malone received, which isn't really something I can say about my next point. Number 2. An Absent Father Carl Malone is the biological father for seven children. However, he had no involvement in the lives of his first three kids. We'll get to the third one in a minute, but Malone's first two children, Cheryl and Daryl, were born when Carl and his girlfriend were only 17 years old. But a day after the twins were born, Malone abandoned his new family and he wouldn't see his children again for another 17 years. Cheryl later stated that she didn't even learn who her father was until she was eight years old. At which point, she became a Carl Malone fan and would watch him live whenever the Jazz came to Dallas, which was only four hours away from their hometown of Louisiana. And at these games, Cheryl would scream her father's name trying to get his attention, but he would never acknowledge her, leaving Cheryl in tears. But Malone would eventually reunite with both twins in 1998, and they would forgive Carl for his past, and he has been involved in their lives ever since. But that doesn't change the fact that when he met them, the twins were already almost finished high school, and Malone was absent for their entire childhoods, which is when your kids need you the most. But they seemed to do fine without him though, since both twins would grow up to be star basketball players in high school. And interestingly enough, Cheryl would even go on to play in the WNBA. So at least Malone gave them his great genes, cause he really didn't provide anything else. Number 3. Carl Malone's Third Child Three years after the Ford twins were born, Malone impregnated another woman while he was in college named Gloria Bell. 
The thing is, Gloria wasn't exactly a woman at the time. She was a 13-year-old girl. Yeah, a 13-year-old girl, while Malone was 20. Not only is that nasty, but it's literally illegal. Malone could have been locked up for years over this, but Gloria's family chose not to press charges because Carl was supposedly a neighborhood kid. They did, however, take Malone to court and asked him to pay just $200 a week in child support money, which shouldn't be much of an issue for a star NBA player, but Carl didn't think he should pay any child support. However, when a paternity test proved that Malone was indeed the father, the court ordered him to pay the Bell family $125 a week, which Malone still refused to pay, and the sides would end up settling for an undisclosed amount sometime between 1988 and 89. Listen, I get that Malone didn't want to pay $200 a week, but come on, he made a ton of money in his career and he should be thankful that the Bells didn't decide to press charges, because Malone never would have had a career to begin with if they did. As for Carl's relationship with his son Demetrius, it was non-existent for the first 17 years. And according to Demetrius, when they did meet, Malone told him it was too late for him to be his father and that he'd have to make it out on his own. Those are some harsh words that no child should ever hear from their father. But it didn't matter to Belle, who said he didn't need a father figure growing up, and that he grew up around good people. Demetrius further proved he didn't need him as he also grew up to be an athlete, but not for the NBA, instead playing in the NFL. So just like Cheryl, Demetrius also greatly benefited from his father's genetics. The two would eventually reconcile their differences in 2014, and Malone seems to have a good relationship with Belle now, but that's not nearly enough to make up for everything else that Malone made this family suffer through. Like, he really impregnated a 13-year-old when he was 20, got away with a statutory charge, left her to take care of the baby, and barely had to pay child support on top of all that. So I don't really think Malone suffered the proper consequences here for an act that doesn't get a whole lot worse than this. Number four, the Magic Johnson comments. As we all know, Magic Johnson was forced to retire just before the 91-92 season due to contracting the HIV virus. But one thing some of you may not know is that Magic was planning to make a comeback for the 92-93 season. But that ultimately didn't happen because a week before the regular season began, the Lakers were facing Cleveland in a preseason game when Magic received a cut on his wrist which caused him to start bleeding. And this was a big deal because back in 1992, we didn't know that much about HIV. HIV or how it could spread, so there was a lot of concern that Magic would bleed on another player's open wound and transmit the virus. So when this incident happened, Magic said he could see the fear in everyone's faces and that this was going to happen all year long. And between this and all the other criticism he'd received, it was just too much and Magic went back into retirement. In regards to the other criticism Magic is referring to, there were some players in the league who didn't want to play against Johnson because they were afraid of catching the virus themselves. However, the most notable comments came from Carl Malone. If I get in a collision with a guy, it don't have to be magic. It can be Joe Smoke. But the fact of the matter is, if you got the AIDS virus, it'll be hard for me to play as hard as I'm capable of playing. And if people can't respect my decision, that's tough. In a separate interview, Magic explains how Malone's comments affected his decision to re-retire. I'm hurt. You're hurt inside, not at him, at the fact that I won't get a chance to play because of what he said. Now, it's easy to look back using hindsight, saying what a jerk Malone was for saying these delusional comments, but we have to understand that in the early 90s, we were still learning things about the virus. And although HIV experts, even at the time, were pretty certain that the chances of it spreading while playing basketball was almost nil, that was new information then, and a lot of people didn't know whether to believe it or not. So as ignorant as Carl's comments seem in 2022, I can't give him too much flack for this since there were quite a few other players around the league at the time who would have thought the same thing. Number 5. Malone making a move on Kobe's wife In 2004, Carl Malone played his 19th and final season with the Los Angeles Lakers and in that year he formed a close relationship with Kobe Bryant to the point that their wives developed a friendship with each other as well. But that all changed on November 23rd, 2004, when Kobe's Lakers were hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. Malone was sitting in the front row with his son, and Kobe's wife Vanessa, who was also at the game, noticed his son looked bored, so she called Malone's wife Kay, who said Vanessa should call Carl and have his son join Vanessa in her seats for a little while. 
But when she did call, Carl instead suggested that she come sit next to him and give him a big hug. Vanessa then asked him why, and Carl replied, if you do, you will be on the cover of every magazine in the country. Vanessa didn't know what to say as Malone continued on asking her if she liked him. For reference, Carl Malone was 41 and married at the time, while Vanessa was only 22 and also married. Vanessa obviously rejected Malone, reminding him that they were both married and that he was old enough to be her father. To which Malone replied, oh, like your daddy? And Vanessa pretty much ended the conversation right after that. At halftime, Malone sent his son to sit with Vanessa for the rest of the game, and when the game was over, Vanessa walked Malone's son back to him, and she saw Carl dressed in a cowboy hat and boots of all things, and she asked him, hey cowboy, what are you hunting? When Malone replied that he was hunting for young Mexican girls. Understandably, Vanessa got creeped out by this and immediately told Kobe about what had just happened. Infuriated, Kobe called Malone, and Carl didn't even deny it. He just said, you know me, man, and Kobe said, that's right, I do know you, so stay away from my wife. And that was basically it for their friendship. However, over a decade later, Malone said he is still willing to fight Kobe if he was still upset over his wife, and to me that just seems wildly petty. But with everything else Malone has already done, I can't really even say this surprises me. I hope I've made some of you guys aware of Malone's actions, cause the NBA did try to sweep the Gloria Bell story under the rug back in 1998, meaning a lot of people never knew about these stories. So for those people, I hope you now know why Carl Malone is one of the most hated players in NBA history. My name is T-Pointer, don't forget to like and subscribe, thank you all for watching, and comment down below who you all want to see next. But until then, I'll see you all next time.